There were a lot of foods that I was really excited to eat when I came to Istanbul, but this one dish, which is called kokoreç, is one of the things I cannot wait to try, and I'm gonna try it right now. <laughs> Good morning everyone, it's Mark Wiens with Migrationology.com in Istanbul, Turkey. Walking through Taksim Square now and we are on our way to go eat breakfast. Walking through Istiklal Street at 7.45 in the morning, it is nice and quiet. We came to this restaurant which is just off Istiklal Street and they are famous especially for serving meneme, which is a type of egg dish. It's chicken with egg. Thank you. Okay. Oh, look oh, good. Thank you. I ordered a dish called meneme, which is Turkish, basically Turkish scrambled eggs. And I got the one with Turkish sausage as well. It looks beautiful. I came to our table sizzling hot, just boiling over. There are peppers and tomatoes and the sausage in here. Before I dig into bread, I've just gotta go in with my fork. Oh wow, look at that texture. It's almost like gravy in texture. That, that really smells like chorizo and eggs. Oh, that Turkish sausage. I have a feeling this is just gonna be like a sponge of fire, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna let it cool down for a little bit. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. That's awesome. Yeah. It's like, it's only half cooked, just lightly cooked. So it remains really, really moist and juicy. And then that Turkish sausage is brilliant. A little bit spicy, and then the texture of that egg is unbelievable. Let me follow that with a little bit of tea. Hot tea, and then let me try my next bite with some bread. Well, that's some pretty solid bread. And then you take pieces of bread, break off a piece, and I'm gonna go with kind of a, a scoop, scoop and mop method. Oh yeah, look, you, you, you need to get a close up of this texture. Just come to look at that, it's almost like cottage cheese in texture. That is awesome. And I don't I don't think there's any cheese. Yeah, at first I thought there was cheese, but I don't think there's any cheese in it. Got a little salad here with tomatoes and chilies. And maybe that's olive oil. Oh. Mm. Yeah, it's just very light. I think olive oil and maybe just a little squeeze of lemon. And then this one is another very common Turkish breakfast um, kind of spread. I think it is the clotted cream with honey. So you take a little bit of this, I think with some honey, clotted cream and honey. Wow. That's like rich and creamy and honey sweet. I think that is cream, but it, also, it has a butter texture to it. And then also got some olives, and I think this is cheese. Let me taste an olive. Oh yeah. It's like a little bit of a, a withered olive. It's almost like a, like a raisin olive. And I think I'll go in with an olive as well, all in one bite. Take out the pit. It's quite a salty cheese, and then it's very soft and spreadable. And then that combination with the olive makes it taste really good. Mm. This is like a completely new style of egg that I've ever had. That was an amazing way to start the day. That Turkish sausage just flavored the entire scrambled eggs, and I loved that texture of the scrambled eggs. When we came in here, it was a little bit quiet. Now it's, it's packed. 
It is still a nice quiet morning in Istanbul. We are walking down the hill towards Galata Kulesi, which is the Galata Tower. It costs 25 lira for entrance to the top and now we are getting in the elevator now to go to the top for the view. It was built in 1348 in a medieval Romanesque style and at the time that it was built it was the tallest building in Istanbul and what you do is you just take an elevator to the top here and then walk to the top and you can get a full 360 view of the city what's really great about this place is just it gives you a sense of the magnitude of Istanbul you can hear the birds you, you can really sense the the contrast of the ancient city to the modern you have amazing views of the Bosphorus sparkling in the sunshine the boats and then over in the distance across this way you can see the Hagia Sophia and the Blue Mosque just some incredible views from here and what I like about it is you have a 360 view you can walk all the way around I'm glad we went to the tower right as they opened because it was really quiet. I can imagine that if it's really busy, it will sort of take away from the ambience and the amazing views. You'll probably be rushed up there, but going right as they opened, that was a fantastic idea. I enjoyed those views. They also have a restaurant at the top, but it's pretty overpriced. So we are now heading down to the water's edge. We had some great views of the bridge from the tower and now we are walking across the Galata Bridge. This is an inlet of water from the Bosphorus. The Bosphorus is over that side, but this is called the Halic, which in English is sometimes referred to as the Golden Horn because of the way it's shaped. And it's another major waterway in Istanbul. It connects the old part of Istanbul with the part of Istanbul that we're staying in. And so we are walking across it by foot. The water is such a deep blue color. And along this bridge, it's especially a favorite fishing spot. Walking across this bridge, you can smell the aroma of the sea breeze. You can smell a little bit of fish in the air. It makes me just wanna hang out and go fishing all day long and then eat the fish. And then over there on the top of the hill there, that is the Galata Tower where we just were. Finished walking across the bridge and there is a treat at the end. There are some well-known boats that serve a fish sandwich which is called balik ekmek. And I think it is mackerel which is grilled and they grill it on the boat. But then they have little seating areas on the, on the, on the solid ground so you're not rocking while you're eating. But I just ordered one sandwich and as soon as you order they grab a piece of the pre-cooked fish filet and they stick it into a big bread loaf and then add in some lettuce and onions. And along with the fish sandwich what's really great about this place is the ambience. You have a great view on both sides. You're sitting on the water's edge and this is an amazing part of Istanbul. Oh yeah. I see the attraction in that. That's a really good fish. It's buttery, a little bit oily, and mackerel is one of my favorite fish. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's mackerel. Got some lemon juice, some bottled lemon juice. 
sprinkle some of this on a good dose of lemon juice and I think I'll sprinkle on a little bit of salt oh that is not open or maybe it's stuck Okay, I think that should be good. It's a very simple sandwich, but I do love the fish. The grilled fish was good. Grilled fish is one of my favorite things. I think it would have been improved had they given me a fresh wedge of lemon as opposed to the lemon in the, the bottle. Uh, but it was still good, and I love this ambience. There are a number of boats along this stretch here, and I think they pretty much all serve the same thing, so we just chose one. We crossed over the road, and we are now entering into the Egyptian Bazaar, which is also known as the Spice Market. There are lots and lots of spices and nuts and dried fruit, and all sorts of cheeses and olives and candies. Look at this amount of nuts. Uh, microphone for audio. Thank you. Hello, sir. Hello. Can I have one kilo of Cherry. cherries, please? Cherry, uh, 12. 12, okay. One kilo, please. One kilo. Yes. Oh. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Can you die? I guess so. Or maybe you should not. I will, though. Or apricot, apricot. I think this is an apricot. Mm. Oh, that's wonderful. Oh, sweet and juicy. Ying really loves cherries, so we stopped to buy a kilo of cherries. And now we are sampling fruit at this store. Mm. We do not get cherries in Thailand. No, that is a treat. It's juicy and just perfectly sweet, not too sweet, but that's wonderful. <laughs> nice to meet you. Hello, hello, welcome. We were just walking around the outside of the market now and have just come inside. And again, there is just a bounty of colorful things. This is my kind of a market. So many spices and aromas. You can smell coffee, you can smell cumin, you can smell turmeric, the chilies. Maybe some incense in the air and some perfume and the Turkish delight. <laughs> There's so many colors and aromas in this market. Nice to meet you. You too, man. So many empty people Yes, still filming. Yes. We are just walking out of the Egyptian bazaar now, but what I loved is that not only do they have so many different spices, but there are so many different herbs and flowers, the different za'atars, the saffron, the roselle, and many things I don't know the name of, but there's such an abundance of different flavorful ingredients. Oh, and the sumac. Lots of different types of sumac and dried chilies as well. From the Egyptian bazaar, we are walking up the hill towards the Shlemanye Jami. Istanbul is a very hilly city, and that means that you exercise when you eat. I needed that little exercise. This is another one of the dominant mosques that you can see on Istanbul's skyline. The entrance courtyard area has a very similar feel to it as the Sultan Ahmed Jami, the Blue Mosque. Again, this is a huge open courtyard. What really stands out to me are the chandeliers are so interesting, especially the one in the center. It is a giant circle which hangs from the ceiling, from the ceiling dome and just these little light bulbs hanging off of it. It just looks like ancient and medieval. And 
and also there's a nice view of the Bosphorus and the Golden Horn from here. I can see over in the distance the Galata Tower where we visited this morning as well as the bridge that we crossed and also where we ate the fish sandwich. That was well worth the visit at the mosque and now we are walking back down the hill on our way to go eat again. Hello. Hello. Oh, thank you. Oh, wow. There were a lot of foods that I was really excited to eat when I came to Istanbul, but this one dish, which is called kokorec, which is a combination of I think it's mostly intestines, but maybe yeah. some other organs as well, which are grilled over fire in a circular shape, is one of the things I cannot wait to try, and I'm gonna try it right now. It's kind of a street food stall because everything is open air, and then all of the tables are out on the sidewalks in kind of this little neighborhood square. It's a, it's a busy place, but at the same time, it's kind of quiet and peaceful, and you can hide away underneath the the foyer here to eat. A lot of people will order the sandwich where he chops up some of the meat and some of the intestines and then sticks it into a loaf and you eat it like a sandwich, but I had to go for the plate. He very delicately and expertly sliced it into pieces and just arranged it onto this plate. And then he sprinkled on some za'atar, I think, and then also some chili. And actually, while I was taking a video of him preparing this plate, he gave me a sample, so I've already tasted it, and it is amazing. And you can see just that is just a pure, beautiful, golden, almost red color on the outside. And then on the inside, it just looks like wonderful white gooey oily meat and the bit on video ying yeah. what is your name hassan hassan okay mark. mark mark the owner chef he has just come over that he told me to eat it right now while it's hot and fresh so i better start eating before i i better stop explaining it and just eat it <laughs> Oh, that is stunning. Oh. It has a wonderful kind of bitter taste to it. And then it's like really crispy on that outside golden edge. But then really soft and you can like feel the texture of the intestines on the inside layer. What's also really good is the combination of that really crispy, crunchy edge on the top. Then with the really soft, oily, kind of fatty down interiors. Add one piece. In there. Maybe I'll try this pickle next. Oh, I think these are chilies. I think I'll add that there and then go for it. Okay. I love that. That is amazing. That bitter taste. The chili, the the herb taste of that za'atar, the crispy to like creamy, fatty intestines. You've got a nice lamb flavor as well. That is like a kind of a mild pickled chili. Add some more of these pickled chilies to my plate. These are really good, and they complement the dish really well because of the the kind of refreshing pickled brine. Uh, with the pretty fatty intestines, but they're so good. Break a piece of that bread. And this is a nice nice bread as well. It almost kind of has that Swiss cheese look to it. All those crunchy bits are just insane. Grab a chili. Oh, oh it went sliding out. That's like just oily, buttery, bitter intestines, and it's wonderful. Dolma. Dolma. Media dolma. Media dolma. Yes. Okay. It's media dolma. Media dolma. That kokorech was fantastic. I loved it. And also right here, they have a little stall set up where they are serving something called media dolma, which are mussels, which are filled with a combination of spices and rice and filled back into the shell and then served like that. And it's a very common street food here in Istanbul. But as I've been walking around, I haven't really noticed many street food stalls selling it. So maybe it's not season. So I thought since they serve it right here, this is my opportunity. I better taste it right now. 
That's a pretty good sized muscle there. Pull it open. Oh, there it comes from that side. Oh, wait. Let me open up this side. Oh, and I think the muscle is maybe underneath here. And then you give it a squeeze of lemon. And I think the way you eat this is you take off, let me, oh, a little, a little piece of the muscle came off on this side. And you take the, take the other side of the shell and you kind of loosen it up. And then kind of scoop the whole thing into your mouth in one bite. That's awesome. That's like, the rice is really gooey. And it has an amazing kind of, I think it's cinnamon in there. Kind of a sweet spice flavor. And then that contrasts the, the sourness of the lemon. Oh, that's delicious. I need one more. Oh, there we go. I got the, the muscle on the top there. Squeeze on some lemon. That rice is like the texture of pudding. And then just that mild blend of spices, that lemon, and it just sort of melts into the muscle. That is marvelous. Thank you. There's no better way to end a meal of roasted baby lamb intestines than with a cup of tea. Yeah, this is fantastic. That was a great meal. And also, not only the kokorech was delicious, but also those media dolma, those were excellent. Together photo. Okay. Together, together. You together. Okay. Very nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Yes, migrationology. Okay. All food, uh, YouTube. Okay. On YouTube. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Very nice. Again, not only was the food spectacular, but the staff and the owner, they're so nice and friendly. Highly recommend for Kokorech in Istanbul. You've got to come check this place out. They will hook you up with some incredible Kokorech. We are now walking towards the Grand Bazaar. We made it to the Grand Bazaar, and not only is this one of Istanbul's oldest covered markets, but it's one of the oldest covered markets in the entire world, dating back to 1455. I've only been walking around the market now for about 10 minutes, but literally everything that I have seen on the streets around Istanbul so far are available at the Grand Bazaar from carpets to clothes to silverware to utensils to glassware to everything in between. Also there's food, there's spices, there are all sorts of textiles and pillows and lots and lots of glassware. Everything you can imagine that is from Turkey you will find at the Grand Bazaar. And what sets this market apart from other markets or other bazaars is that it's housed within this ancient structure which dates back to 1455 and so not only are there so many things for sale and just a browsing paradise but you also have a piece of history chai please yes uh one two okay. two yes please. thank you Oh, that's some nice strong tea. Mm, that's good. We've been walking around the Grand Bazaar for a while and we are pretty worn out, so we're catching an Uber back to the hotel.
gonna rest for a little while and then go back out again for dinner. Hello, is it Uber? Yes. yes, okay, thank you. We are waiting at the bus stop this evening. Gonna try to take a bus to an area of town to eat dinner tonight. Traffic is pretty heavy and our bus is pretty packed, but we are on our way now. But it didn't take too long, we got off the bus. I think this area is called Ortakai. And we are going to go to a restaurant around this area. Oh, this is the place right here. Hello. This restaurant specializes both in kebabs, but the main reason I came here was to eat lakmajun, which is a flat dough which is topped with meat, and it's a very famous Turkish dish. I'm starting off with ariyar, which is a, a yogurt drink, I think. Mm. That is sour and salty mm, and very rich and buttery. That's good. That will go good with the, the tomato-y bread. And also to start with, I got a kube. And this is a, a very common kind of snack in parts of the Levant as well. I think it's bulgar wheat with meat on the inside. I'm gonna squeeze a bunch of lemon on it. All right. That is one of the more delicious versions that I've had. It's packed with meat. You can taste lots of onions in there. Mm. That's delicious. Photo? Yes. Photo and video. Thank you. Wow. This is the Lakmajul, which this place is really famous for. Ying already had a piece, she enjoyed it. And then we got the spicy version, so there's chilies on there. I think there's some za'atar as well, or some, some kind of herb. And then it is fired in a burning oven. And it's very thin. You can see it's almost it's almost like cracker thin. And I think what I see people do is first squeeze on some lemon. I'm gonna squeeze on a bunch of lemon. And then I think that you're support I think you're supposed to sort of roll it up, take out the seat, and eat it like a roll. Oh yeah. That's like, yeah, the bread is very thin and a little bit crispy, but then a little bit chewy at the same time. And you can taste that minced meat. You can taste the herb in there. When I ordered this dish, I had no idea it was going to be this big. On the menu in the little photo, it looked like it was about half this size. But this is giant. And it looks like a, it's like, it's similar to a calzone, but then quite different as well. It's shaped like a boat or like a trough and just filled with meat and I think tomatoes and maybe parsley in there and then baked in the oven as well. Look at that, that's just like meat bread. Mm. That bread is definitely a lot thicker than the lakmajun and it's, it's more of a chewy bread but then very very crusty. So that's just like pure meat and bread but really good meat and bread. Follow that with some arian. Mm. That's a good combination. And then finally, the last dish I ordered, and I actually had no idea what I was ordering, but this is the their special kebab here. And it almost looks like a chimichanga plate, but there's a kebab inside, and then it's wrapped in dough and then also baked. Oh, and there's cheese in here too. Oh, wow. That is the winner right there. Oh, 
kebab and cheese stuffed within like a, a piece of dough and then roasted in that oven and maybe with a little bit of a tomato sauce on top and some sesame seeds that is awesome for my next piece of lak majun, I'm gonna add a bunch of vegetables to it. Stick this all into the middle. I think this is what most people are, are doing. And then I'm gonna go in with some lemon again. Oh, that lemon is almost finished. Let me grab the other lemon. And this will be like a like a salad roll. The lemon is is the touch I love. And then again, just wrap this all up. This is a very popular restaurant. They are getting a lot of takeaway orders as we are sitting here. Oh yeah. A cracker, thin crust, salad roll. That was another great meal and all three of the things I ordered were much different and I've had this problem since coming to um, Turkey that I've been kind of over ordering I think because maybe I'm accustomed to Asian food so much where well especially in Thailand where the portions are kind of small so you order like five or six dishes between Ying and I. We always order five or six dishes here. They are huge and I was imagining that um, that like trough to be like only a quarter of the size so I could not finish all that bread had to had to get a takeaway bag and I'm gonna bring that back to the hotel with us for breakfast tomorrow a shout out to culinarybackstreets.com for this recommendation that's where I found this place this was a great place I'm gonna end the video now we're just gonna head back thank you all very much for watching today's video it's been an amazing food day actually. We've eaten, I think I've tried quite a few different dishes and wandered around Istanbul. Another fantastic day. Please remember to subscribe if you're not already subscribed for lots more food and travel videos. And I will see you on the next video. Thank you for watching.